Well, it was a very successful cigarette edition. We were very happy about it. Of course, it uh, caused a lot of problems to, to try to make as comfortable as possible for so many people at the same time. We had uh, record-breaking days where we sold out the daily tickets also in, in, in advance. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was an interesting, uh, very tiring cigarette, but it was a good one. Uh, well, it's a good question. If you talk about the budget, of course, the, the musical lineup is, uh, is a big proportion of the budget. It's, uh, it's almost 80-90% of our programming budget. But if you talk about the concept, I would say it's 50-50. So it's uh, because SIGAT was never a music, only a music festival. It was always about uh, all kinds of arts. Uh, for us, the, the, the other contemporary arts are just as much important as music. So if we want to see a percentage, it's 50-50. If you talk about the budget, of course, to get the, the headliners, the big names, uh, it takes a lot of money, so it's uh, it's more like 90 to 10 or 80 to 20. Well, the, I think the the reason why everybody's talking about SIGET is, well, first, of course, the history, the 25 years, well, what SIGET is uh, having, uh, but also the, the international crowd which appears at SIGET. So the, 60% of the visitors are coming from abroad and it's not a local festival whilst the other festivals Volt, Strand, Bimailek are mainly for local people and for those who see these festivals as let's say hidden treasures in Europe that they go for because it's different because it's not so big um, but if you talk about Balaton sound it also gets more and more international so I think that's the main difference between these brands that Siget and Balaton sound is it's very international, very big. The other festivals are more like boutique festivals, smaller and mainly for the locals. We don't actually want to do a kids zone or kids stage because we believe that those kids who are coming to Siget into the family camping or into those venues where they can play around and, and, and see. We believe that kids are part of the festival so the parents can decide if they take them to concerts or to, to other venues to show them circus, uh, to show them the giant street theater which is very spectacular. But even the, you know, but the closing act of the main stage has a huge end show with fireworks, which is very interesting for kids. So we believe it's, it's good if the kids are able to mix up in the program and find their own programs there. And there are venues which uh, especially care for kids. Uh, but we don't want to do a special kids zone. We don't want to close the kids into that zone because that's a different approach. So therefore we believe there must be a place where they can sleep and they can sleep differently, of course, than, than the adults, so to say. Uh, but it should be, the whole festival should be fit for kids as well. And we have more and more kids every year coming with their parents uh, and the family camping is really full. So it's, uh, I think it's a good approach and we, we, we're really stuck on it. Well, uh, Apart from Siget, it would be a lie to say that it's not Siget, <laughs> uh, because I work so much on Siget that it must be my favorite. But if I look around, uh, I, I have seen festivals which I really like, uh, but these are in most of the cases smaller festivals, maybe not so famous, maybe not so trendy. Uh, I like these kind of boutique festivals, small ones with less people. Uh, because the atmosphere of these festivals is very different than the, the big ones. So I wouldn't name Tomorrowland or Glastonbury because it would be a lie that they are my, my favorites. I would, I would go for the smaller ones. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>